Now, Jeep hasn't had the best reputation for building a smaller crossover SUV. Just take a look at the brands Compass and Patriot Twins. Those two are largely responsible for littering the rental fleets of America. Well, I'm happy to say that Jeep has an all-new smaller SUV that's designed to slot below the two rental queens. Let's take a look at the all-new 2016 Jeep Renegade. Now here in America, Jeep has a pretty iconic and long following. There's a lot of heritage in this brand and it certainly shows in every vehicle that the company introduces. Now, unfortunately for the compact Patriot and Compass, those two vehicles never really caught on with the Jeep faithful. I mean, they were essentially just raised versions of the unloved Dodge Caliber. Now, uh, today the Compass and the Patriot are still available. However, most of you will find them typically in your rental fleet. So when the company was looking to introduce an all new subcompact SUV, Jeep went to went for a little bit of help from their Italian cousin Fiat, and uh, the Jeep Renegade is basically a Fiat platform. It's a new SUV platform that's developed between Jeep and Fiat, and a lot of people were worried. A lot of people were saying this Fiat platform will not make this a real Jeep, just like the Compass and Patriot. And today, let's take a look and see if that is true or not. Now, one thing about the Renegade that I really like is the design. When Jeep first showed us this car uh, last year, I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, I think it looks very, very cool. It looks pretty much like a miniature Hot Wheels car that is brought up to uh, a real life size. And I love the design of the Renegade, especially compared to somewhat bland vehicles like the Trax and the HRV. Uh, and it definitely looks much more interesting than the weird look of the Nissan Juke, for example. Now you can see the front end of the Renegade has the family resemblance to every other Jeep. It's got the same seven slot grille, the circular headlights that basically has been on Jeeps for years. And I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks uh, like it's the perfect size vehicle to really, you know, put in the urban environment if those of you uh, live in this big city, for example. Now, looking around the overall poor proportions of this car, it's a pretty small vehicle. It's about 166 inches long, uh, which makes it about a couple inches shorter than the uh, Mazda CX-3 and Honda HRV, despite the fact that this vehicle looks a lot bigger. Now, one thing you're going to notice about the Jeep um, is it's a lot wider. It's about 74 inches wider. That wide. That makes it about six inches lot wider uh, versus the Honda or the Mazda, and that's a pretty big substantial difference now looking around the rear it has a very traditional boxy look and I like I like that particular look it makes this car funky it makes it cool it certainly makes it stand out in a sea of cookie cro cookie cutter um, crossovers that tend to populate this uh, segment now uh, in terms of the trim levels the Renegade is available in several my particular one is the top of the line Trailhawk now this is the one that the one to get if you're looking for the trail rated Jeep as you can see there's trail rated badges on the side uh, this particular model does add a couple of things such as the all-terrain tires it gives you about an inch lift in the uh, ground clearance this vehicle offers almost nine inches of ground clearance so that's really unheard of uh, in a class like this so in typical jeep fashion um, they do promise off-road ability and uh, the renegade for the most part looks like it's willing to uh, deliver now one thing about uh, the jeep renegade's design is there's a lot of easter eggs in the design what i mean by that is you'll, you'll find several jeep heritage badges you'll find um, the jeep seven slot grill and the tail lights you'll find a a Jeep 7 slot grill in a lot of the window trim. Um, there's several s different Easter eggs that you can find throughout the interior and in, even in the fuel tank you'll find uh, a little spider with the chow badge or the chow sign that uh, goes back to its Italian roots. Now uh, the Renegade has certainly uh, been a pretty big hit for Jeep. Um, a lot of consumers really took to liking to the car and it's been doing pretty well in terms of sales but for now let's take a look at the interior uh, and see if it uh, has that traditional Jeep strengths or weaknesses. Now my particular Renegade does have a Chrysler smart key access system so all you have to do is keep this Jeep key fob on your person or in your purse. And to lock the car, you have to push this button right here. That locks the car for you. To unlock it, just touch the back of the handle 
and that unlocks the car for you. Now, looking at the interior of the all-new Renegade, you can see it's certainly got as much character as the uh, cute little exterior. There's a lot of design touches in here uh, that certainly make this a lot more interesting versus some of its competitors. My particular uh, Trailhawk does have what Jeep calls is like a premium leather package that gives you the leather seats. The Trailhawk in general will give you the red, the red contrasting stitching, and then of course the Trailhawk uh, badges along with the red uh, trim throughout the cabin. Now you can see uh, the step-in height of this car is very nice. Uh, it definitely has that higher seating position than uh, the HRV, the CX-3 that I've uh, tested earlier this year. And you can see uh, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the interior design. It's certainly unique. It's certainly interesting. And uh, when you shut the door, uh, it has a pretty solid thunk, so I'm happy to say that the overall impression of quality here is pretty good. Now, like I said earlier, uh, my tester does have the push-button start. I'm not really a fan of this button here. Uh, it's about a $250 option to get the push-button start. It looks kind of cheap. I kind of wish the Jeep had put it over here and made the button made of a different material versus this plastic. But you can see, uh, to start it up, just have, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake or and push the button to start the engine. Now it's been a while since I've tested a modern Jeep, so this is definitely uh, a new experience for me. I never typically was a fan of Jeeps in the past for their cheap interior quality, their lackluster build quality. But you can see the company has made some pretty big, great strides to improve uh, that. The gauges are pretty nice to look at. I really like the detail that Jeep goes into. Like for example, uh, the mud, the, the splattered mud look of the uh, red line in the tachometer is certainly very interesting. It certainly makes this vehicle a lot more fun. And overall, the ambiance interior is pretty nice uh and regarding the materials, this dashboard is actually soft touch. It's an entire piece of soft touch plastic, so I was pretty surprised to see that. Um, the door panels here, unfortunately, are hard plastic, but down here it is leather stitched uh, where your elbows are going to rest. There's a nice silver painted accented uh, door handle, handle there. The windows are automatic up, down, one touch for the driver and the front passenger, so it's nice that Jeep gave you that. Now you can see the steering wheel actually comes basically off of the Grand Cherokee. It's a pretty nice thick rim steering wheel. The leather feels really good. It has the same contrasting stitching some nice steering wheel controls. I still am not a fan of the Chrysler uh, audio controls on the back of the wheel. It requires you to basically memorize what they do. There's no labeling, of course. Now you can see um, the rest of the center stack here certainly has a little bit of a mismatch of parts from different companies. The lower controls here for the HVACs are actually from the Fiat uh, corporate parts bin. Uh, you can see my tester does have dual zone automatic climate control. You do get that when you get the leather feature package. The limited trim also gives that to you as well. Uh, my tester also has the cold weather package that gives you a heated steering wheel and then uh, two level heated front seats. There's no cool seats available of course this is uh, Jeep's entry level uh, subcompact SUV. Now you can see the seats are actually quite comfortable. I'm pretty happy to say the leather feels really good. They have good bolstering, good support. Uh, the headrests do not adjust forward or anything like that but they are nice and large to uh, you know uh, give you that neck protection, that neck support, of course. There's a nice grab handle here, and then, of course, there's lots of Jeep heritage cues. You see, you can see since 1964, in case you forget when this company was born. You can see the Jeep um, seven-slot grille and headlights in the uh, behind the rearview mirror. Uh, down there, uh, where the windshield wiper is, the base, you can see there's a little Jeep um, car going up a hill. So again, there's lots of little Easter eggs throughout this cabin just to make this a little bit more of an interesting design. Now, looking at the media center here, my particular tester does have an optional Uconnect six and a half inch display with navigation and the upgraded uh, nine speaker Beats audio system. And again, it is pretty class competitive. Chrysler's Uconnect has been getting some pretty good reviews. Um, the system itself is pretty easy to use. The, the map for the navigation is actually Garmin. So if you guys are really um, used to using Garmin, in from the, in the aftermarket you're gonna feel basically right at home uh, when you use the system you can see your radio sources here are pretty typical Sirius XM uh, FM AM if you go to your media sources here you can go to your Bluetooth streaming audio uh, it has um, USB of course uh, there is no CD player as I'm seeing in this vehicle so uh, it looks like Jeep has gotten rid of that which most people honestly don't use CDs today anymore anyways but overall the touch response here if you go to the apps there is a wireless hotspot in here and then you can also look at all the different apps if you want to go through you know Pandora your Yelp um, the system is a little bit slower to populate but overall I'm pretty pleased with the touch response of here of the system it is um, better than some of the competing other American brands although some of the buttons here are a little bit small the six and a half inch screen is certainly a lot smaller than the 8.4 inch screen that you're gonna get on the bigger Jeep such as the Grand Cherokee now looking at the uh, center console here I'm sorry the glove box it's a pretty large glove box it's not lined with felt but it's damp so there's really good storage space there's also good storage space down here um, your USB a 12 volt and then of course the the um, 
Trailhawk model will give you a selectable four-wheel drive system with a four-wheel low switch. So this is a real four-wheel drive system, and you can switch between automatic, you can switch between sn sand, snow, mud, and rock. So again, the Renegade is trail rated, and this is one of the reasons why you would pick the Trailhawk model to give you that selectable four-wheel drive system. Now, my tester does have the company's nine-speed automatic transmission with a manual mode. There is no sport mode here, but I do like the large shifter. Um, it feels pretty sturdy. The transmission itself is built by ZF, but tuned by Jeep and Chrysler. So we'll get on the test drive later and show you how it performs. But when you can see you can put it, when, when you put it in reverse here, you do have a nice backup camera with trajectory. The graphics itself are kind of cheap looking, but um, remember this is the inexpensive Jeep. So it's nice that Jeep at least gives you that. There is a safety and security package that my tester is lacking that gives you backup sensors and then the blind spot monitoring, which I technically do not have since I do not have that, that package. now. Looking at the rest of the center stack here, cup holders are very nice and large. There's an electronic parking brake. Uh, the, the center console here is nicely padded with a sliding armrest portion here. And then of course there's more storage and another USB port there. Now, I wanna take a look at really quick of this uh, cool little magic sky roof is what Jeep calls it. Uh, it's a removable two-piece uh, panel. You can basically get it between uh, just a removable fi uh, removable manual uh, um, two fixed panels or you can get what my tester has which is the power sliding one. Uh, if you push this down here you can see the front it works like a sunroof basically. One thing I don't like is the fact that there's no glass portion here so you can't actually let the sun in without opening this but if you want to open this panel here you want to take basically these little hex keys. I'm not sure if Jeep actually gives this to you. This is something that I actually had in my, home, in my house, but to open the panel, you have to stick this little key in here and get it in the slot. And then when you turn it, it opens that little latch there. Then you can just push the panel up and then basically remove the panel. Now, I'm not going to do that because the panel is a little bit heavy uh, and you do need to actually get out of the vehicle to open the panel. So it is a little bit of a pain to get the panel actually back uh, to fit but you can see here uh, when you want to open it again just push this button here it's an it's an additional three hundred dollars if you guys want this power opening feature and I would highly recommend it as the panels themselves are a little bit of a pain in the ass to open and you can't exactly do it at a stoplight and if it rains by the way you better uh, you better basically make sure that you can get out and put the panel back on you can see I've taken the rear panel off which does let in a nice amount of light but again if it rains you're basically gonna be screwed if it starts pouring and there's nowhere where you can pull over uh, where it's covered so you can uh, protect the interior of your vehicle now overall the front seat area um, has very good visibility uh, very large side mirrors it has a really nice commanding view of the road. The seats themselves are pretty, they sit pretty high up and you can feel the width of this car. This feels a lot wider than the um, HRV and the CX-3 and the Juke. So if you guys are looking for a more substantial feeling subcompact SUV, uh, the Renegade certainly fits that bill. Now taking a look at the rear seat of the Renegade, it is a rather tight uh, rear seat. It's about the same size in terms of space as the CX-3. You can see uh, that removable panel adds a good amount of light. So if you guys have good weather like me for today in the 70s, um, you're going to want to take off those two roof panels. I personally actually like to leave the front one on and just slide it open. I thought it's a nice compromise and it keeps the wind buffeting down to a minimum as uh, there's a little wind pop-up wind deflector that pops up uh, when that sunroof portion is open. Now you can see uh, there is a couple of more um, Jeep heritage Easter eggs here in the speaker grills. There's another uh, seven slot grill. Uh, there's more red stitching back here and you can see stepping back here there is a decent amount of leg room and foot space underneath the front seat. So it's not terrible back here. There is an actual household power outlet uh, in the rear seat area, so it's nice. There's no rear seat vents, of course. Uh, when you shut the door, it has the same solid thunk. There is hard plastic here, but at least it is leather stitch uh, right there where your elbows are gonna rest. And then Jeep, as you can see, gives you two map pockets. There is no armrest right here, but the seats do fold down in a 60-40 uh, split manner. Now checking out the cargo area of the Renegade, you can see it's a pretty small and tight cargo area. This kind of reminds me a lot of the CX-3 in terms of its space, but you can see the boxy design certainly gives you a little bit more usable space. Now one thing that you're going to notice is this portion right here is actually for the removable roof panels. It does take out a good chunk of your space when you do actually store stuff or store the roof in there. So keep that in mind if you guys are planning to use this for cargo. Now with the second row seats folded up, you're looking at about 18 and a half cubic feet of space. Uh, fold them down and you will 
will get about 50 cubic feet of space. So um, when you fold down the seats, the Renegade does offer a decent amount of cargo space uh, if you do have it taken over a little bit uh, by that uh, storage area. Now, if you look underneath this thing, uh, the Renegade actually does come with a full size spare. That's really unheard of in this class, but it's the fact that this is the Trailhawk model. Jeep gives you a full size matching spare in case you guys get into trouble uh, while you're attacking those trails. the cute little Renegade, you're going to find a choice of two engines. Now, my tester has the larger of the two engines. This is Chrysler's 2.4 liter multi-air Tiger Shark four-cylinder engine. Now, uh, this is basically our newer engine family design. It's shared with Fiat in terms of its design. The multi-air badge is Fiat's term for how it basically ingests the air. Now, this engine is not the thoroughly most modern engine in the class. It doesn't have direct injection, even though you hear it ticking away. It's not actually direct injection. So it's port injected. It's a single design instead of double overhead cam it does have 16 valves the power output numbers are pretty much class competitive 180 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque now the 2.4 only comes with Chrysler's nine-speed automatic transmission you can take your pick between front or trail rated four-wheel drive like my tester uh, the 1.4 liter turbocharged engine that comes from the Fiat uh, 500 a bar for example is the base engine that engine only comes with a six-speed manual that's probably the one I'm more interested in driving as you can get the 2.4 or the 1.4 turbo in front or all-wheel drive the Fiat version of this car the 500x does not offer the six-speed with uh, four-wheel drive like the Jeep does now fuel economy is also con a concern with this class and the Renegade gets basically average gas mileage numbers you're looking at about 24 31 for, uh, for that 1.4 six-speed manual with front-wheel drive this 2.4 with all-wheel drive is significantly heavier in fact the Renegade itself is a pretty damn heavy vehicle this vehicle weighs about 3,500 pounds which is 600 pounds more than the Mazda and the Honda so Jeep does have uh, it looks like it's been packing on the the Twinkies and this car is a little bit overweight but it is a wider and trail uh, wider vehicle and it has more off heavy off-road gear so fuel economy for this one's rated at about 21 29 about 24 combined which is uh, below Low average at that point, um, a lot of compact larger SUVs are going to get it, get better gas mods. But at least this 2.4 drinks regular gas. Let's get out on the road and see how it all works together, shall we? Now, most of you know I wasn't really a fan of the old uh, Compass and Patriot. So when I got my hands on this all-new Renegade, I was a little concerned that it may carry on those traits uh, from uh, the rental fleet queens uh, in the Jeep lineup. So uh, this this Renegade does have the same powertrain out of that 200 I showed you, the 2.4 Tiger Shark and a nine-speed ZF Source automatic. Let's see if Jeep has uh, tuned it to work a little bit better in the uh, smaller Renegade. Now the Renegade is pretty heavy for a vehicle of this caliber. Um, it weighs about 3,500 pounds in this Trailhawk trim uh, with all-wheel drive, so it does make it about 300 pounds heavier than the 200 that I showed you guys. And you can pretty much tell this vehicle needs more power. Um, the 2.4 is the biggest engine you can buy, so it's a little disappointing uh, considering the uh, acceleration of this car. The Tiger Shark engine is also rather unrefined. It's a little noisy. I mean, this engine is basically the... Uh, upgraded or modern or newer version of the old 2.4 that was in the caliber and the patriot makes a little bit more horsepower 180 horsepower but really i could forgive the engine what i can't forgive is this nine speed automatic the programming and the tuning is just all wrong it's really jerky it's somewhat slow to shift really to get it going you have to literally floor the accelerator pedal um and then the transmission will clunking or clunkingly get out of its not its top gear uh, and give you a little bit more power. But honestly, Jeep really needs to work on reprogramming, retuning uh, the overall uh, programming of this transmission. And it's amazing to me how this car has nine gears. Yet it feels like it accelerates like a four-speed automatic. I have no idea how Jeep managed to do that with this uh, nine-speed uh, transmission. Now, 
with your foot to the floor and uh, having a lot of patience, the Renegade will get to 60 in about 10 seconds, which is honestly probably around the same as that HRV that I showed you guys. So, I mean, in terms of class competitiveness, um, you're not going to be buying this car to go racing. It's not designed to go fast. But uh, I will say that, you know, most buyers demand or expect, you know, a, a, an adequate level of power. And this car feels adequate probably about 50% of the times. The other 50% of the time, I wish that it had uh, more power. I wish that I really would like to try out the 1.5 turbo or 1.4 turbo with a six speed, uh, of course, but that powertrain combination is not available on this top of the line Trailhawk model that I, I like particularly much. Now, let's not, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. The overall driving experience of the Renegade isn't as bad as I'm making it out to be with the acceleration. This car actually handles pretty well. I was actually surprised. The steering is pretty precise. It's pretty direct. It is not but the Renegade has a certain playfulness that you don't expect uh, from a vehicle with the Jeep, the Jeep uh, nomenclature. So um, in terms of handling, fun to drive in the corners, the Renegade is quite enjoyable actually. It's just when you, you know, are trying to accelerate, that's when you really notice the lack of power. And the other thing you're also going to notice with this Trailhawk is the interior is not the quietest. These uh, all-terrain tires are a tad on the noisier side, um, but it's kind of expected when you... Uh, when you uh, go for you know this type of vehicle. The ride quality is also a little bit harsher, and it's probably gonna be a little harsher versus the uh, other trims of the Renegade, just because uh, this suspension is an off-road ready suspension, so it needs to be a little bit firmer. But nonetheless, the seats are pretty comfortable. The visibility in here is good. There's really good sight lines, uh, because this is basically just a big old box. Huge side mirrors. My tester doesn't have the driver assistance advanced package, whatever, so it doesn't really need the driver assistance tech. Um, you can go for like a blind spot monitoring option uh, on the Trailhawk, but the Renegade Trailhawk does not offer the um, advanced technology package with the lane departure warning and the um, automatic braking uh, technology. Now, one thing that you guys are probably curious about is that magic uh, My Sky roof feature. Um, I did drive the car with the roof panels off. Now, be advised when those roof panels are off, both of them, um, the interior does have a fair amount of wind buffeting noise. Uh, one thing that I definitely don't want you to do is don't close this front sunroof panel leaving the, the roof panel uh, on and then take the back one off when you do that the buffeting is so obnoxious it literally made my ears bleed uh, you want to leave this panel open which when the panel is open um, it's pretty it's very nice it basically works just like a sunroof I wish that I could just have the light come in uh, without opening the panel but it's not a glass panel it's just a you know a plastic panel so you're not gonna get that but when you can see here with the with that open the buffeting is okay uh, there is a wind deflector right here that helps quiet down the noise but I mean you can see here when that is open this renegade just has a uh, it has just uh, even more character it makes the car more fun and this is part of the Jeep brand is just building a vehicle that you know you want to take off-road you want to take to the trails that's exactly why Jeep basically put all those little Easter eggs throughout the cabin and you know I really think the Renegade has a place in this market. It, it, a lot of you are probably wondering, is this a real Jeep? Does it feel like a real Jeep? And I think it does um, in terms of its handling and its feel. Uh, the car has a very SUV-like, planted, substantial feel. I mean, you're gonna get that from the six inch wider body. I mean, the Renegade, honestly, it's 74 inches wide. It's a pretty wide, uh, small SUV, probably the widest in the class. And you know, it gives the car a more aggressive, more masculine feel from behind the wheel, really. It's just the powertrain, you're gonna be let down, but you know, most Jeep buyers, they don't really buy it to go fast. You know, you gotta get the Grand Cherokee uh, with the V8 or the SRT8 uh, if you're looking for a fast Jeep. But I mean, honestly, I think Jeep has done a pretty good job with the Renegade. It has the most character in the class. It has the most off-road ready suspension. It's the most trail rated vehicle. Um, and it's also probably one of the best looking in the class. So in terms of those strengths, I think Jeep has done a really good job. Now, regarding the pricing of the Renegade, uh, Jeep's uh, smallest SUV actually undercuts a lot of its competitors. You can get a base sport with two wheel drive for about just under $18,000 uh, plus destination, of course, which is a thousand bucks. Now, keep in mind, if you guys go for that base model, it'll have steel wheels. It won't have air conditioning or cruise control, which is one of the only, one of the few vehicles on the market that doesn't offer air conditioning. If you want that, it's like a $1,500 package you have to add on, which honestly, at that point, you're going to be pushed back to the base price of the HRV, uh, the Juke, the Crosstrek, and the CX-3. Now, my particular uh, Trailhawk model is the top of the line model. This one only comes with four wheel drive. If you want a Renegade with four wheel drive, it's going to cost you two grand more on the other trims uh, versus the Trailhawk comes standard with four wheel drive. It starts at just under 26,000, about 25,900. 
Ryzen 5. Now, of course, my tester has several options on it. Um, it's got a $1,500 leather, premium leather package. Uh, it's got a nav package for about $1,300. The sky roof is $1,400. Uh, remote start is also included in mine for $200. And then the hood decal on the front is also another $200. All in mine's just over $31,000, which makes the Renegade actually more expensive than a lot of its competitors. Only the CX-3 uh, can get up to that level. Subaru's Crosstrek also, the XV Crosstrek can get pretty expensive, but it is a little bit bigger uh, than the Renegade in terms of overall size. But I mean, in terms terms of the pricing, um, the Jeep Renegade is you know, a good deal if you guys go easy on the options. Uh, just keep in mind that you will have to be dealing with the, the plagues of this 9-speed auto, but if you guys are looking for something that has all this character, the Jeep's pretty much uh, in a class of its own. Now the fuel economy in my particular tester uh, is not rated pretty high, highly. Um, now the computer's been saying I've been averaging about 30 miles to the gallon, uh, which honestly I think is a little too... Um, enthusiastic about that number it's it's a little too far-fetched uh, I've been averaging uh, according to my own calculations about in the low 20s or 21 22 miles per gallon really the problem is this engine you have to push your foot down all the time to get it going and that really makes that suffer and um, the 9-speed auto is constantly in its top gear trying to save you gas but when it's so slow and you can't you can't you know keep up with traffic you're gonna constantly be dipping into the throttle so uh, once Jeep fixes that um, this Renegade will certainly be tops in the class and I definitely would recommend it if you guys don't really notice this too much and some of you honestly won't you'll be too charmed by this vehicle's cute adorable looks and it's a uh, you know, it's, it's off-road a bit capability. So, uh, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2016 uh, Jeep Renegade Trailhawk. If you're in the market for one of these new cute utes, I would definitely suggest taking a look at one. It is certainly worth a look. Just know that there are uh, competitors out there that are a little bit more pleasing to uh, drive, especially in terms of the powertrain. Anyways, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, if you are looking to see the latest vehicles that I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram. Like us on Facebook and keep subscribed to the YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.